Phyla Kuppe, a town in the Indian state of Karnataka, is home to 70,000 Tibetans, making it the second largest Tibetan settlement in the world outside Tibet. The 3,000 acre region was allotted for rehabilitating the Tibetans who had immigrated to the new found home in 1959, post the invasion of Tibet. This was the year when His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, formed the Tibetan government in exile in the town of Dharmashala in Himachal Pradesh. Though it was only in 1959 that the Tibetan refugees found a new home in a welcoming country, the links that they had with India were deep-rooted even in their religion. One of the founders of the Nyingma sect the oldest sect of Tibetan Buddhism, Guru Padmasambhava, was believed to be from India. He is known to have constructed the oldest monastery in Tibet, the Samya Monastery. Baila Kuppe is home to the largest monastery of the Nyingma lineage of Buddhism. The monastery was established by Rubhang Padma Norbu Rinpoche in 1963 following his exile from Tibet in 1959. The monastery is home to over 5,000 lamas. The institution was identified as the secondary sect of Palyul Monastery of Tibet after the Tibetan government in exile was founded. Driving through this town, one can easily mistake the environs for a typical town in Tibet with many separate refugee camps following different lineages of Tibetan Buddhism. Every aspect of Tibetan life and culture can be observed here. Stupas, butter lamps, butter tea, 
and of course delicious Tibetan cuisine. It is incredible to note that the traditions of the old country are still being followed in letter and spirit over generations without any signs of distortion. The Government of India build special schools for Tibetans that provide free education, healthcare and scholarships for those students who excel in school. Tibetans live in India with a stay permit which is processed through a document called Registration Certificate. Every Tibetan refugee above the age of 16 must register for the stay permit. Like in the old country and many Tibetan settlements across India, the Tibetan New Year or Losar is celebrated with much fanfare and authentic traditions. It is celebrated over 15 days, each day having its own significance. The Jinsek or the Fire Puja is an important part of the celebrations. Various substances are put into a ritual fire and this fire is seen as a means to transfer the offerings from our realm to the divine realm. All visitors are welcome as observers or participants in the puja. It is believed to be beneficial for the visitors to circumambulate the fire puja while offering a handful of incense and precious substances to the fragrant blades. Fire Puja ceremony is believed to fulfill wishes, remove obstacles, improve health and bring about prosperity.
Tibetans from all age groups have gathered here in this massive ground to witness the unfurling of the Holy Tankha, a giant painting of Buddha Amitayus. As the wait intensifies, the monks arrive carrying the massive tankha that would be installed on the giant platform. As soon as the unfurling of the 200 feet long and 250 wide Tankha begins, the thousands of Tibetan Buddhists start reciting mantras and pray to the magnificent Tankha of the Buddha Amitayus.
The attendees then make their way towards the Tibetan mask dance or chum. Being an important element of Tibetan Buddhism, Cham is performed as a meditation to scare away the evils within us. That is precisely why the masks are made to look scary. The dancers have to be in perfect sync while the trumpets and cymbals are being played. Chum is performed in multiple forms. The black hat dance or Zana Nya Chum is associated with the Tibetan king Lang Dharma. He was believed to be a brutal ruler who destroyed many monasteries and executed Buddhist nuns and monks. It is believed that a monk named Lalung Pelgi Dodji performed this dance before striking the king with an arrow. Apparently, Guru Padma Sambhava too performed this dance while laying the foundation of the Samye Monastery in Tibet.
the deer dance called Milarepa Cham stems from the legend of the 11th century Buddhist mystic Jetson Milarepa, who tamed a dog in order to protect the deer that had entered his cave. The dance is believed to have originated at Sir Gontham, a Kagyu monastery by the Lhasa River in Tibet. The deer dance can be interpreted in different ways depending on the performance. If it is performed by a group, the dancers signify and represent one of the many protector deities and rids the new year of the negative forces. But when it is performed by one dancer, he represents the deer that was tamed and rescued by Milarepa. The skeleton dancers, also known as Sitipati, originated from the legend of Sitipati, who were members of Vajrakalaya Cham that was started by Guru Padma Sambhava at Samya Monastery, which is the first monastery in Tibet. It is believed that the skeletons represent the disintegration phenomena including the body itself as well as the impermanent nature of various states of the mind. These traditions help in ensuring that the original tenets of Tibetan life remain intact even though they are slowly fading away in the home country. <laughs>